uh, welcome to the system engineering seminar. Um, it's my distinct pleasure to introduce Dr. Hong Chen from PJM. Um, for those who don't know about PJM, let me just quote uh, Bill Hagen, uh, Bill Hogan, who is one of the pioneers in electricity market. He said, PJM interconnection enjoys iconic status as the major innovator uh, in electricity restructuring. PJM demonstrates the capabilities to provide the necessary coordination for competition in electricity markets. The core of PJM market design, um, a bit based security constraint economic dispatch with locational marginal price, works in theory and in practice. So most importantly, uh, we have the leading expert in practical designs, the practitioners, uh, Dr. Hong Chen, who is um, the principal engineer in PJM in market design. Um, she got her PhD from Waterloo um, and uh, uh, worked for ISO New England as a principal analyst and joined PJM as the principal engineer. Um, she is the vice president of uh, IEEE technical committees uh, technical activity and the uh, chairs for multiple IEEE um, uh, committees. Um, she published a book on market design, uh, risk based market design, and uh, she will tell us what it, why PJM is so good. <laughs> Uh, thanks, Professor Tong, for the introduction and for inviting me to be here. I think it's a great honor for me to have the opportunity to talk to all of you. And I see so many of you here had the chance to chat with a couple of um, people here. I think I am feel energetic and young again, so great. I think, you know, um, I'll share my experience at the wholesale electricity market operation, and you can stop me anytime for the questions. So I don't know, this is overview of electricity market. I'll put more focus on PGM market. As uh, Professor Tom mentioned, the PGM market is a um, mainstream uh, US market design. So variations could be different at different markets, but the philosophy applies to all. So that's why now I use PGM as an as a, uh, example to introduce the market design. All right, so next one. So I want to first talk about PGM. So we talk about PGM system, PGM market, then the, the key concept of a wholesale electricity market, then talk about my favorite topic, integrated system and the market operation. I'm a power engineer, hardcore power engineer. So system operation is the key and the electricity market is on top of system operation. So that's my favorite topic. And then after that, I will touch upon a couple of um, interesting industry hot topics, such as you know, how we handle uncertainties from our operation, how we do gas electric coordination, renewable storage, and the distributed energy resources. If time allows, and I will touch upon the system operation experience under extreme weather, which we had just experienced in the past uh, December, um, actually, Christmas Eve for winter storm Elliot. So first, PGM system. As we know, PGM system is part of the Eastern interconnection as a grid-wide, system-wide PGM is last, largest uh, system in the U.S. So as you can see the stats there, we have about over 183,000 generation capacity. Our all-time peak load is over 165,000. We at the market wise, we have over 1,100 member company. We cover um, 13 states and the DC area to serve 65 million people. So one important thing to mention here is you no know, 21% of our US GDP is produced in PGM region. So we are really you no know, critical mission to make sure we serve our people and to make sure we are running reliability reliably. Otherwise, it will be you no know, big impact to the society. PGM as a regional system operator, we have three main um, focus. Number one, reliable system operation. 
your system reliable, jam balance, no transmission overload, the voltage issue. Number two, efficient market operation. You know, we operate the market trying to you know how we operate it more efficiently. The third one is regional planning. We are not only make sure we are reliable today, we have to be reliable in the future. 50 years ahead, we have to plan the generation of transmission to make sure we have enough you know, future generation and the transmission asset to meet future load and reliability requirements. So this slide shows the annual billing since 2003. Um, you know, the past, you can see the evolution of the, the change. So for the past year, 2022, our annual billing is over $86 billion. So the wholesale electricity market run by PGM is the largest electricity, wholesale electricity market in the world. So lots of impact from there. You know, one thing I noted out the why, you know, people probably ask why for 2022, we have a jump of uh, annual billing. Couple of things, you know, for previous two years, we had the impact of uh, um, the, the pandemic. So load was not that high. So for 2022, load going back. The other big factor is we have the gas costs, you no know, basic gas costs increase for the past year. So this slide shows the PGM installed the capacity. Um, as you can see here, the, the blue color, basically the gas unit take up on half of our generation fleet. So that's the biggest one. Then we have a coal unit, about a quarter of coal unit and then 20% of a nuclear unit. So one thing noted right now for hydro, wind, solar, um, for the renewables, at the PGM system, it's still no small percentage, but it's, that's going to change in the future. This, uh, this graph is showing the annual fuel mix for the past decade or so. You can see the generation fuel mix changing. So if you want to note for the top green ones are the nuclear units, Slightly reduced since 2005, not much change from there. They are continued to be our baseline generation. If you see the bottom, the, the dark blue line, those are the coal units. They used to be our dominant field in 2005 timeframe. Gradually, they are retiring in a quite uh, fast, in a very fast speed. Um, because of economic reason, no, they are not become cost to run. And also because the regular, no, we have the environment regulation, they have to retire. So they are only take about 20% now. Then if you look at the, the blue, light blue ones, those, those are the gas units. PGM region sit on the places we have abundant macellar share. So we have lots of gas supply. So this makes our gas unit percentage wise from previous 10% to now about over 50% capacity wise. And then energy wise, it's about taking about 40% of energy coming from gas unit. So this big shift of, uh, from our coal to the gas unit causing some challenges, give us lots of flexibility. Also the challenges, especially you know, during the winter time when we have to compete with uh, you know, heating supply for the gas supply. So some of the challenges I will touch upon later on. Uh, during the winter storm Elliot. So this slide shows the big picture of a wholesale market design. Now our wholesale market design generally follow multi-settlement market you know, nodal based system. So if you can see the time frame, we're basically ranging from planning horizon to the real time fly, uh, horizon. So when the time going to the real time operation, the coupling between power system operation and electricity market operation become tighter. So from the planning wise, you know, we have to look at five, three years, five years ahead, make sure we have enough generation resources to meet future load and operating reserve requirements. So at the PGM market, we have the capacity market just to serve this purpose. PGM capacity market called a uh, reliability pricing model. So basically, to make sure you know, for the future forecast load and also reserve requirement basic around 15% close to that number. And we make sure we have enough generation capacity be there to make sure a feature you know, to meet the future demand. Um, for the mark, some regions don't have the capacity market such as the one in Urquhart. So they are rely on you no know, price spikes um, and also rely on the 
uh, reserve adequacy program to make sure there's a future system reliability is guaranteed. And then um, before every operating day, the key part of the market settlement market design is that we have day ahead market. Basically, that's a financial market. On the um, participant wide, beside those finicker, physical um, participant generation, load, and uh, transactions, we also have the virtues participant uh, day ahead market. So they had the market position majority of the resources for the operating day. Then after they had a close, we will have the reliability assessment and commitment. That's a non-market tool, but that's helped to bridge they had the financial market with physical system operation. Try to see, you know, based on what they had the market cleared, do we still have enough generation resources? to meet the forecast load and operating reserve requirement. One important thing mentioned here, the data had is a financial market that is based on the bidding load, which could be quite different as the one operating day we are based on forecast load. So RAC is an important process to you know, bridge this gap between the two. And then after that, lots of uh, markets, such as PGM market, also New England market, we have hourly regulation market, trying to procure regulation resources an hour ahead, make sure they are there to you know, uh, help our regulation, provide the regulation service. Then going to the real time, we have um, IT SCAD, you know, basically a real time commitment to software. Look at the two hours based on forecast load and interchange, determine do we have the call on, call off unit to correspond to align with the load change. And then we have a real-time um, dispatch tool, basically look at 10 minutes ahead, send a dispatch signal every five minutes to all the online generators to move generator up and down to respond to, the, to meet the load, to meet the reserve requirement, and also to resolve congestion. So um, when the one thing is important, all these real-time operating markets uh, have those, um, mo most of them have energy and the reserve are optimizes to make sure overall economic efficiency. All these are based on the physical system operation, which is reflected in the state estimates of solution. I see a question. I'm sorry, I just trying to connect this with the last slide. The last slide is what you generate and manage, or what you manage with the wholesale energy. Uh, can you speak a little louder? So the last slide you showed uh, the, uh, the breakdown of the source of the energy and the megawatt uh, that he generates. Is that all of it about what he generates or what he generates and also what you manage through the wholesale? Yeah, so um, the previous slides I show the generation fleet for different category of field type, right? That you the, own. The gap, no, we don't, for the RTO, we don't own any generator. So our members could be the generation owner, um, they are the one on the generation. We, as an RTO, we dispatch generation, commit the generation in the most economic efficient way. So all these generators, we have over 1,400 generators in our system. So we will take a look at them as a whole, based on their bid, you no know, cheapest one to own first, unless there's a congestion in the area. So state estimates solution provide you no know, system condition at that right time, the, the real-time system condition, and also reflect the topology, which would be, and also this network sensitivity information to provide to the, to the real-time dispatch. And then important thing, I think uh, this morning, one people mentioned about, you know, our dispatch signal is every five minutes, we have dispatch signal sent to all our generators. In the real-time operation, it's every second, all the systems are running continuously. So very important information is we have this AGC basically you know, have sending the signal every four seconds to all the regulation units to help uh, you know, make sure our frequency is within the limit. So uh, to regulate our frequency. And the important thing here is you know, all this they had market, real-time market, they are LP-based you know, system congestion management. So as a, as a natural of LP-based congestion management, based on the location, they are different. So um, in order to catch the congestion charge,
So there's also financial transmission right market to specially designed to have a low facility this uh, the financial instrument to give them to hedge congestion charge. And then for PGM, we also have a perfect dispatch process, which is a mar not a market tool, but it's after fact um, operation evaluation tool to evaluate the operation for the previous operation day. So that's uh, also, I know, I think it's interesting to uh, introduce here. Um, one thing is, you know, I mentioned when the thing, uh, when the timeline closer to real time, the coupling between system and uh, market becomes stronger. So that's why I think for today's talk, I have more focus on day ahead market and the real time market because that's more um, closely into impact to the, to the operating day. So in the, this slide shows the day ahead market operation. As I mentioned earlier, the input wise. We not only have physical bid, we also have virtual bid because they have market is a financial market. The virtues we have ink and the depth. You no, know, the designs there is you no know, added. Uh, they are trying to you know help the convergence between they had a real time market. We all also have the virtual transactions. They are mimic as a transaction you know, based on the price. They can clear to the they had a market or not. And um, why important? Okay, go ahead. Do all generators have to participate. Can I just drop out and appear tomorrow? Um, depend. So for all the generators, we have the capacity market. For all the generators which cleared in they had a, in capacity market, we are consider them as a capacity resources. So they have the must bid requirement. They have to make their self available bid into the they had market. So for other units, they did not clear in capacity market. They can wait to see, you know, um, just a, a participant in the real time market. Oh, is the interchange and the virtual transactions are bilateral between the two parties? They are. Um, they are between two systems. So when I say interchange, for example, the interchange between PGM and the MISO, interchange between PGM and the TVA, those are the physical interchange. We have to consider that. So virtual transaction, they are financial. So any pass they can open, if they anticipate there is a no congestion difference, they can bid in as a virtual. Virtues are virtues, though they don't have this physically delivered. So they are all, um, both of them are transactions in the day ahead market. Yeah, they are all in, we'll talk about here, only in day ahead market. And this virtual bid transaction only available in day ahead market because that's a financial market. And the important thing is, you no, know, they had uh, running a day before. Set. For the topology wise, we don't have they had a link automatically based on the state estimate solution. So for the all the transmission outages, which already scheduled ahead of time, when the, by the time they had a clearing, we have the opportunity to consider all the transmission outages in the day ahead clearing. So that case. The topology wise, they had will be as much as close to the real time. Unless there's something happened between they had the close and the real time operation, then that's the cause topology difference. Otherwise, we we'll have a similar topology between they had and the real time. And the, the key part of the they had operation, the market clearing is stock scat, you know, represent a security constraint unit commitment and the security constraint economic dispatch. Then there is a feasibility analysis. Basically, once they had for cleared for the 24 hours, they had a schedule. We have to make sure this 24 hours they had a schedule have to physically available to deliver by our transmission transmission network. So that's feasibility analysis. Actually, in fact, is a contingency analysis running powerful lower contingency analysis. Make sure all this megawatts are deliverable. If we identify any you know, over limit, there are, those constraints will be enforced into the SCAC SCAD and then do the iteration again unless there is no more violation. So that's they had the market clearing. Um, then after they had the market clearing, we'll talk about you know, we'll have the real-time market. So real-time market below is very similar as a day had the market, but one big difference is Real-time market, we think about that's the real-time operating day. 
no virtues, only physical. Physical generation, load forecast, and the interchange. Those are the physical transactions already planned uh, between the different control area. So um, same thing, stack scat is a key for real-time operation. And then key difference here is for real-time operation, it's very coupled, timely, closely coupled with system operation in terms of they are uh, receiving the information from our EMS, energy management system. One big part of this is state estimate solution provide a real-time system topology and a real-time system status. Those information are feeding to our stack and scat, know where we are now in terms of generation and the load, and what's our topology, and there what's their impact. And then we also have contingency analysis, which are both of these um, two are two important components of our EMS system. So contingency analysis basically do N minus one, because that's no, for power system analysis, we are doing, make sure N minus one contingency criteria is met. So whenever we are using this contingency analysis, if dispatch no, already foresee there is a potential um, transmission overload or they already overload, they will activate that transmission constraint. When they activate that transmission constraint, this will be included in the security constraint in the commitment and the security constraint economic dispatch. And also by activating that, the constraint sensitivities will be also included and sent to the SCAC SCAT. So that will do the uh, optimization problem, so which we will see in the next slides. So the con contingency in real time also run every five minutes? Um, so for the state estimate solution for PGM, we run every one minute. For contingency analysis at the PGM, run every three minutes. So all this latest information will be fed into the SCAC SCAD, which is run up for the real time SCAD, run every three minutes. So we want to know, make sure with all this latest information, we'll send out dispatch signal to all generators every five minutes have a signal. So for this is no, your like math. So this is a mathematical optimization problem, naturally for stack and SCAD. As you can see here, the objective function is minimize uh, social benefit, or you say minimize total production cost. These are basically reflected by the generation bit or the demand response offers. And then also um, you say the constraint wise, basic operation, you know, power system operation, generation have to balance with load all the time. So naturally power balance constraint has been there all the time. And then reserve requirement constraint. And for, for now, when we have the energy reserve optimization, it's included there uh, as a, one of the system requirement constraint. And then transmission constraint because of the thermal overload, as I mentioned earlier, if you anticipate any transmission line approaching or already overload, you have to include in part of the optimization and make sure your dispatch you know, does not violate any transmission limit. And then, of course, you know, all the resources have their limitation, their mean, max, and how fast they can ramp, which is reflected in the ramp restriction. They can submit their ramp um, for at a different megawatt level. So those information all included in optimization. Down the input wise, of course, no load forecast, interchange for the forecast will feed into this application or the bid and the resource limitation, system topology and the limit, which coming from state estimator solution and the real-time contingency analysis. And then reliability requirement basically, which I mentioned is either the transmission limit or reserve requirement. It's based on the operating, um, you know, what we operate based on operating criteria. And output wise, we will have energy dispatch for all the, you know, send to the generators. We'll have price signal. I'm very important to mention about locational marginal price signal is one sending to all the generators. Make sure the generators, of course, they want to maximize their benefit. The risk, only then when they respond to PGM, if this PGM goal align with their goal. So when we have the sending to them price signal, because they already can see, consider the unit level constraint and the system constraint. When they respond to the price signal the dispatch, they also help us to you know, meet the load, resolve constraint. 
and also sending a long-term price signal to know where generation have to be located, where load can be located, and the transmission infrastructure need to build up for the to avoid the congestion in the future. Then for the market which have energy reserve optimization, their each resource they will also have their reserve assignment and the, um, on the system level there also no zonal level there's a reserve clearing price as well. So here, uh, no, as I mentioned, is you know, when we go into the, especially going to real time, the coupling is tightly coupled. We cannot say um, we have separate market operation, separate operation. It's the integrated system market operation. So when our dispatch run the system, they are actually running the real time market. So if you look at the here, here our market, you no know, system operation, it's there. We have to make sure our systems are reliable and they can no, anticipate all kind of uh, uncertainty condition. And so we have to reliable as possible. That's the system operating criteria. And then on market side, we first, we have the market created and trying to make sure we run system economic effic efficiently, you know, lower the cost as possible. However, these two objectives, you know, risk mitigation and the market efficiency, sometimes they often have very um, opposite objective regarding to the unit uh, commitment or dispatch. So um, the idea, you know, we want to achieve the market equilibrium. So basically the best you know, way, mitigate the risk in the most economic efficient way. But that's the idea, right? So that's our goal for the market design. So currently, um, the design focus is mostly uh, focused you know, when we operate the system, we follow operating criteria. Operating criteria normally are imposed by our external entities, for example, NERC. NERC have their operating criteria you know, we have to maintain and by this one criteria, we have to maintain enough reserve to uh, mitigate anticipated you know, system tripping, disturbance, so those are operating criteria. If we can um, formulate this operating criteria, criteria include them as a system constraint in the market solution, then the thought process, the price and the dispatch will reflect the operating criteria or reflect the system operation need. Then the one this price dispatch information sent to our market participant. It could be gen, it could be demand, or it could be also transmission owners. When they respond to this dispatch, when they respond to the price, they will also not only not meet their own financial need, they will also help uh, RTOs to you know, meet the system operation requirement, basically address the system operation need. I think you know, the uh, basic LP based uh, congestion management is one, you know, Example we use to address the system need using price signal. Uh, sorry, uh, are your uh, uh, ISO and RTO they adjacent to each other geographically? Are you guys cooperating to load balancing or because the equation can explode, right? So how how you actually want outside of that? So um, for example, we have PGM system, we have MISO system, and yeah, each RTO we uh, optimize and balance our load. For our own, but the important part we have the inter tie. We have ties. Those transactions all coming to play. So unless we we have those no, the transactions can be impacted by the pricing difference between the two markets. Like a wholesale, wholesale. Yeah, and also we have a joint optimization for certain ties. Um, optim with a MISO with a NISO. So in that case, we use whichever cheapest resources to resolve congestion. No, it doesn't matter it's PGM own resources or MISO, we use the cheapest one to join to optimize how that's the, the most efficient solution. We do use that. Yeah. You guys have a credit system? Yeah, we will have this settlement, you know. Once when during real time we use cheapest resources, there was settlement afterwards to you know, see who is you no know, paying, who is you no know, get paid. Yeah. So so does the optimization look ahead? Yes, so all this uh, optimization are looking ahead. So depend on which is you no know, for um, commitment, it's look at two hours ahead for the call on and the call off unit. And then for dispatch, those mostly for online resources, look at the 10 minutes 
you know, based on the, the 10 minutes load and other resource availability where you should be. So it's all a look at, it's a decision making process. So one thing is, you know, I mentioned about LP based congestion is toward this goal. And uh, those idea, if we can formulate all system constraints in the market solution, boom, problem solved, pricing align with operation. But the reality, it is not. Uh, not all system uh, uh, criteria can be included currently as a system constraint. So that's why the bottom part, we have out of market action, which is you know, the action taken by our system operators. They are trying to make sure our system operates reliably. So these are not through the market. That's why they are directly from our system operation to either gen or demand or transmission taking action because they are outside of market. So may not necessarily they are economic efficiently. So those actions could be you know, causing additional costs to the market, to the system and incur you no know, uplift. So this is also, you know, what we are trying to minimize as much as possible. Using the tool is better if we can, yeah. So uh, optimization and dealing with the executives, they look for the biggest dollar, the most efficient, or reliability, which is good. But uh, if you have uh, renewable energy, which is everything is heading towards, reliability and efficiency is very questionable when you try to do a one minute increment, you know, computations. So it needs to have like a policy to say, favorite uh, uh, this wind farm, if you have a low, bring it online versus turn off the, the coal. So you would have a policy in here, but are you guys forecasting or building a new thing that can accommodate this huge uncertainty coming up? Yeah, I think for, from that perspective, though, first we are RTO. We don't say, no, we need more renewable. We're using price signal to reflect that. We are technology neutral. So those calls are gradually retired because of economic reason and also because of you know, their state policy. We as RTO, we cannot say you have to retire. And then regarding to the uncertainty coming from these renewable resources, right? In the operation, we have to know, currently in our system, the percentage is small, so it's not big headache yet, but we still need to factor in. You know, they sometimes they cause congestion because of the limit, limitation of transmission lines, so we have to curtail them. And you know, since our all the tools are look ahead, so we have to know, ideally, we need to know ahead of time. So we are in the process of integrating this wind forecast and the solar forecast in our decision support tool so we know this ahead of time so we can be prepared for that so i talked to early you know we uh, for example when we have the one area we have a solar unit lots of solar at the sunset not just one solar two solar we have big part of the solar farm multiple of them all of suddenly those mag water disappeared right now without all the information it's a surprise to dispatch, right? Of course, the experienced dispatch, they will know that they can manually put a deviation there to account for the uncertainty coming from the solar unit. But once we have this uh, forecast information in, we will know, look at two hours, you know, when the sun is down, we are going to lose about 2,000 megawatt solar units. In that case, our commitment software will commit more, for example, combined cycle, uh, the com uh, uh, combustion turbine, we say CTs, coming online to compensate the megawatt loss coming from the solar unit. Sorry, one more thing. There's a consumer downstream to this problem where now certain states, especially in your area, uh, people, they actually opt in for electricity, that it is renewable and renewable only, and they buy a premium price, but the sun was set. But they have to be provided to their term of contract, renewable, even after hours. How you can divert, or how, how you manage that load, actually, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so when, to the RTO, we uh, manage, we say net load. Okay. For example, no, for example, I have a big, say, the big uh, factory, right? We have the renewable contract, I have to reuse renewables. If they have their you know, solar farm running, um, those are 
most of the way, sun is shining, the solar farm provided electricity to that. So we, as RTO, we don't have to supply power to you. So that's already being taken effect in our net load forecast. When sun is done, so that's no, those are the high meter generators for those solar farm. Once we have those forecast information, that's reflecting our net load, it, we will be able to kind of mitigate that effect in our dispatch software. I mentioned LP and then another example for the integrated market is a reserve. A good example is our reserve, the reserve market. Many years ago, when we had the market, it's energy only market basically, only consider the energy, uh, the power balance and the constraint, um, transmission constraint control. But in the system operation, we always need a reserve maintain the reserve to for the anticipated you know, generation tripping and the load sudden load change for example when you have a big cloud covering the, low, the behind meter solar is down and load is shooting up so we always need the reserves to for the you know, for the uncertainty so reserve and the operating system are procured at different time scale for different system events so we have 10 minutes reserve a 30 minutes reserve and the sum provided by the online generators are synchronized reserve. If they are provided by the offline generators, we know it's a non synchronized reserve, a second reserve if they take a longer time to start. So, before you know, we have the market, whatever the decision made by our operator to maintain a reserve are out, out of market action, this you know, don't reflect in the price. So when we have no, when the market evolve, we are trying to have the reserve market. So basically trying to use price signal to reflect the system need of the reserve set to incentivize resources. It could be generator, could be demand response to provide that additional flexibility to the system. They can ramp up and down you know, for the using unavailable, uh, unused capacity to provide the additional system support. So that's a, a good example for using the integrated system market operation. Since we talk about uncertainties, no uncertainties is always a big part of the system operation, coming from all kind of system elements, you know, from generators, generator tripping, from system component, line transformer, circuit breaker tripping, and then from load wise, load is always changing due to extreme event. Or especially these days, we have more distributed energy resources. This adds more variability and uncertainty to the load side. So that's a new problem. And then interchange, you know, the activities between different markets, between different control areas. That's going to make a big change, you know, especially to PGM system. Interchange can be 7,000, even to 10,000 megawatt change. So that's big. And in 10 minutes. So the other thing is we talk about the renewables. You know, those are increasing volatility coming from renewables. They are having impact by the weathers. So another, another thing very unique to PGM system, to most of the north, <laughs> the north side of the system is the gas uncertainty. As I mentioned earlier, we have about 50% of fleets are gas units. In the winter time, gas also used for heating. So we are competing with the, you know, the residential heating for the, you know, for the as a gas supply. So that's causing lots of problems, which I can mention that um, later on. So, so do gas turbines have to have dual fuel capability like they do in New York? Yes, good question. Some of them have a dual fuel capability. Actually, after the couple of big extreme events, we are talking, you know, is that will be a requirement. We will factor that in our capacity market. That's one area for improvement. So um, hedging the uncertainties um, is always be part of the system operation. And that problem is naturally a stochastic problem. But the reality is you know, as a practical operation, tackling real world problem, stochastic problem, you know, basically posing the computation challenge so on our, you know, from practical operation perspective, right now we are using, instead of one software, we are using you no know, staged unit commitment. 
using those multiple small software, quick start software stage at a different level of uncertainty to help dispatch manage uncertainty. And I think this is more emphasized the timeline mentioned early. They had a commitment position, most of the unit commitment for the operating day, but that may not be enough. So we have the REC process after they had a market bridge, they had in the real time, basically help our dispatch you know, uh, uh, secure or calling on additional generator for the next operating day. Then we have the CT optimizer. We, we saw it, CTs, those are mainly gas, um, gas turbine, they are gas supply, uh, they are quick start. They are the one CTO running at the beginning of the operating day, running whole day, 24 hours optimization, have the plan for the whole day provided to our dispatch. But they don't have to call those CTs at that moment because as I mentioned, those CTs are quick start. They can come on and come up quickly and the system condition can change. So they don't have to make a decision at that point. And the, at the PGM system, we have a lot of gas units. So we have that little luxury to wait and see. So that's why normal process wise, at the beginning of our day, we only call those um, inflexible CT, they're like longer than two hour time to start, longer than two hour main run. If they clear the day had the market, we'll call them. So at the beginning of the day. Then along the operating day, we will have that uh, unit commitment tool. It's called IT SCAD, basically rolling forward. I look at the two hours ahead every five minutes to make a recommendation for the on and off for only those uh, CTs, this a combustion turbine, um, based on updated system conditions. And then we have for online generator, we send a real time, we have the real time SCAD basically provide a dispatch signal sent to all online resources. Also, along with dispatch signal, they will have price signal as, as well coming out of the real-time scan. So all this uh, RAC, CTO, uh, IT scan, real-time scan, all these real-time, these are the decision support tool. They also have, they all have multiple scenarios. So um, our dispatch action right now is still very important because dispatch is the one using all these tools. They are the one make you no know, um, setting the scenario. So that's why at the PGM also important here is we have a perfect dispatch, which is not, um, uh, it's uh, no after operating day. So we have all this historical data. They are the one provide the knowledge to dispatch. So help them for them to set in scenarios for this real time uh, software and um, no, make the software get the solution for the real-time operation. So let's say the computations yield that the expect in the next five minutes will be an increase of load, uh, and then you need to bring in more, uh, you need to dispatch more uh, generation power. Do you, like, a, uh, let's say the expectation will be like a 50 megawatt, do you bring in a 60 megawatt? What is like the, uh, the risk of not meeting it or not overshooting, and then it'll be, it would be just a sending electricity with no money, no one buying it. Okay, so one thing is though, when we do this secure constraint unit uh, company's step department, we are based on forecast load. So ideally, so we are power balance, so exact gen megawatt need to meet the load, right? But however, all this um, based on their bid price, However, those generators, this is a non-convex problem. Those generators, they all have their, especially the big one, they have the in. So if we calling you online, you cannot stay at the randomly megawatt. So at least if you are online, you have to stay at their in. So those generators sometimes, you, I don't need that much megawatt because you are online, you stay at the in. So some other more flexible generator had to dispatch it down. But on the power balance wise, we exactly, match so it's same as a uh, need the need the uh, load can and also consider losses so losses being considered as well so in a summary so right now in our system we use stage the unit commitment and also perfect dispatch based knowledge system to help our dispatch to kind of hedge the uncertainty coming from different aspects Okay, I mentioned about the perfect dispatch. 
So this is a quite a unique to perfect uh, to PGM system. PGM um, developed the perfect batch pro concept and also process. That idea is trying to improve you know, dispatch operation, make sure you know, we have the knowledge come from perfect batch to improve and then we do better. So basically, perfect batch is based on after, after fact, based on all the information already happened. So there's no uncertainty there. We based on actual load, actual generation availability, of course, we an actual system topology. Of course, so they have all the generation data as well. Then doing the whole day, 24 hours optimization, then come with a perfect dispatch solution. So because we are assuming all the operating criteria are enforced by the outside the entities, so basically balance economic efficiency and operational risk. But I mentioned you know, real-time operation is never perfect. There's uncertainty there. So their uncertainty will cause some deviation between actual real-time operation with perfect solution. And also generator response. You know, we send a dispatch signal to all the generator our system. But generator may not exactly follow the dispatch signal if they are deviate from a, our dispatch signal, that's also cause deviation between the two solutions. The other big chunk is dispatch action. So that's causing you know, um, the difference between real-time operation and the perfect dispatch solution. So um, PGM has been using perfect dispatch um, since 2008. But basically, first, we have 80 years as a corporate goal, basically enforce us to improve dispatch action, trying to increase our economic efficiency. Well, three part of a big uh, dispatch action we have been focusing for the past years. You no, know, one big thing is constraint control. Um, as an operator, the tendency is control system more conservatively, make sure you no know, the reliability issue, but that also increase the cost. So one you no know, that's one area of focus. The other area is when we commit unit um, either the rack process or in real time um, commit to you know, the CTs on and off, that also you know, can cause a deviation. So basically, we are using the knowledge come from perfect dispatch to improve those uh, three type, uh, type of uh, dispatch actions. So right now, it's a daily process. So up to you know, 20, 2019, the saving coming from perfect dispatch is over $1.5 billion. Um, also, you know, besides helping with dispatch actions, we're also using perfect dispatch, trying to persuade the dispatch using more tools. You know, those are optimization tools making decision versus you know, using human decision. So this is interesting to mention here. I mentioned you know, this is one thing we um, out of uh, the forced outage rate coming from the 2014 polar vortex. So that's the time you know, we had a um, significant uh, forced outage. If you look at here, we have 22% uh, of total capacity were out during that time. Our normal outage rates, even during winter time, is around between 5 to 10%. So that's significant outage um, during that time. And the other thing interesting to note that you know, the, the pink and the magenta color, the majority of this forced outage are for coming from gas units. So because that, you know, that polar vortex time, uh, this evening peak time, we were um, 180,000 capacity, over 40,000 forced out. So we left with only 140,000 to serve our load. So at that time, we were very tight. We, um, we called demand response. So we had a voltage reduction. But finally, we survived during that time. But out of that the polar vortex experience, no gas um, because of significant amount of gas outage. So we put a lot of focus trying to address that issue. So multiple um, change on the market side, trying to hedge your gas uncertainty. First thing is in 2015, we uh, implemented capacity performance into our capacity market. So in that case, you know, we provide a stronger financial incentive to the capacity market. If, you know, if you can clear the capacity market, you have to perform during the time when we need you. And if you overperform, you get a reward. If you underperform, you get a penalty. And we also um, change our day at a timing to better align gas operating day 
with electrical operating day. Um, that's no, we had a, that change in 2016. Now also, we, uh, in 2017, we implement the intraday offer. So basically, um, besides, no, don't before, you only have the opportunity, they had a bidding, then a rebidding period. Now, give them unit ability to update their offer within the operating day, 65 minutes before the operating hour. The idea is, you no, know, because a lot of gas units, the cost, you no, know, coming from the gas procurement can be accurately reflected in the, in our market. So that's giving them lots of flexibility from there. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, after implementing the intraday offer and then the performance uh, implementation, do you see any of your clients, the suppliers, they're actually switching from coal to gas because now the gas, it is nimble. You can bring it on and bring it off. They can sell more. Did, did that actually help? Yes, actually, by that time, we had that implemented in 2015 for the 2016 to 17 uh, capacity auction. And from the past um, five or seven years, so we have the coal retirement continuously along this timeline, and the more big combined cycle gas unit coming online, thanks to Jano. They bring a lot of, no, over 10,000 megawatt gas unit coming online. They are big gas units. So that's definitely helpful with the transition. But the story more are coming on that one. Can we hold the question a little bit uh, yeah. at the end? I think the time is a little bit in now. Um, I, one thing I mentioned, you know, renewable is a big topic in the industry. Right now, the share in the PGM system is small, but if you look at the interconnection queue, over 190 gigawatts, 93% are solar, wind, and the battery, or hybrid. So that's coming. The percentage is increasing, and we will have, we will have to deal with the uncertainty coming from renewable resources. So more wind and the solar, so one thing we mentioned, we'll need more flexibility um, coming from gas units to provide more ramping and the cycling, you no, know, because you no know, combined standby can on and off quickly. We will have probably we are thinking about how we're going to increase our regulation market requirement just to you know, meet the challenge when we have more renewable uncertainties. Of course, they also you know this wind and solar, the bidding to our market with either zero offer or negative offer. So overall, they will reduce our energy price in the area, in our system, or system-wide, SMP-wise, may not be negative, but for the congested place, they will get negative price. In that case, you know, we'll make the unit, how they can have the revenue. You know, energy, price, energy market will be less. They are more reliant on our capacity market. For the aircraft, they don't have a capacity market. They rely more on the price spikes. You know, three thousand could be even more for them to recover. Uh, the, the, I mentioned the you know, negative energy price as well, and the storage. Um, well, running out of time. So those are the storage technologies currently in PGM system. Pump storage is traditional one. We have that since 1965. We also have the biggest pump storage in the world. Then we have the, the middle part is a battery trailer, actually co-owned by AES, and the, that time located at PGM campus. So PGM was the first RTO, basically demonstrated that they greatly connected the battery and provide the regulation service. So since that time, now we have about 300 um, battery. This is the one bigger facility. That one is one megawatt. Later on, there is two megawatts. Uh, a battery array and this one is a bigger facility and um, basically battery is co-located with wind and the solar but not as a hybrid right that time it's they are separate and the market particip participated market the bottom left is a flywheel basically we had our flywheel 20 meg of flywheel they are fast they provide the regulation the EV um, this is um, that was, uh, we had a, a collaboration project with, uh, with the University of Delaware. So those EVs um, can charge and discharge, follow uh, system PGM signal to provide the regulation services. And then we have this, uh, this picture actually is a um, water heater at the PGM campus. So if you have been there, you will be see that. So those um, water heater responded to the PGM regulation participant as a demand response, 
provide the regulation service. So now I think we have a lot of uh, thermal storage in the PGM market to provide as a DR provided service. So you can see here, you know, each different storage type, their participation in different markets, and then uh, you know, pump storage is the biggest chunk, and then the, the rest of them, it's about three megawatt, uh, 300 megawatt. They are, they are fast, but they, are, they have a limited um, duration. So those are, that's why they mainly participate in our regulation market. So FERC order 841 is you know, issued in 2018, trying to remo remove all the barriers to store your resources. So to respond to that, an order RTO ISO. So PGM has the compliance um, summit and implement energy storage participation model in at the end of 2019, trying to you know, have the three modes, con um, continuous mode, charge mode, discharge mode, enable all these storage resources participate in our data market, real-time market. They similar as other generators, they can be dispatchable, they can also set in the price. And then the other hot topic right now is distributed energy storage. You know, lots of them know we know lots of rooftop, rooftop solar. So they have um, lots of uh, distribution energy resources coming online in our system. And the FERC also have order 2222, very famous one. So the RTO ISO trying to comply with that. Think about a way to, you know, um, to facilitate all this DER participation in the market. So right now in the PGM system, we say you no know, distributed energy resources, they are physically connected at the distribution side. But they can serve, you no, know, they can directly serve retail load. They can participate in the PGM market either as a demand side resources, in that case, meet the demand side criteria, or as a front meter generator, so in the same as other type of generators. And then uh, no, we have you no know, been working with our transmission owners to remove barrier. I said they all are the distribution side, not currently in our PGM, you know, model our bulk power system. So not visible to PGM, but they actually impact the operation. So we need a more increased visibility from them. We need to improve forecasting and also for them to remove barrier it will be very easy for them to switch between participating in wholesale market and also retail market. And we cannot overcome them. So that's causing some very practical um, challenge to the market side. So this is a snapshot of the ERs in PGM system. The number may be a little bit outdated with a bigger number right now. So you can see that majority of them are on the non wholesale DERs behind meter. And then we have a 3,000 megawatt more um, in the participate in the wholesale market side, either as a DER or as a generator. In that case, they participate in all of our market. So here I mentioned about demand and response. Demand and response, we have currently about 15. 15,000 megawatts. Um, I think PGM right now is still the biggest market with the, for the demand and response. So I want to really emphasize there demand, the role of demand and response and the importance of demand and response. You know, um, besides we rely on big generators, now demand and response participate a bigger role to ensure system reliability and also economically. So um, especially with more DERs, one thing I really want to mention about it saved our grid during winter storm Elliot, and also you know, as um, as they show in the last year's uh, California, also saved the California uh, from have to issue rolling blackout. So perfect segue, we're going to you know, talk about what we just experienced for winter storm Elliot. Um, as you can see that that's happened in Christmas Eve, you know, holiday time for the past years, those those are the load for the past 10 years during holiday time. So this is definitely an outlier, significantly higher than any other um, period, time period. And also, if you see this interesting, um, during the valley, you see this one, valley load is about 40,000 much higher than any peak during the past 10 years. So, in that case, that's causing a challenge. You know, um, for example, in the north, 
north part of the US and the PGM and New England winter time, we have double peak, morning peak, evening peak, then we have evening valley. So valley time, the load is lower, people are sleeping, there's no mall and operating. So that's the time we cycle generation off. And also importantly, it's for pump storage resources. They have to pump in to fill their pump, then be able to meet the morning peak. So it's a very challenging time though. So at that time, evening peak during the Christmas Eve, load is so high, we can, they don't have the opportunity to pump. The rationale why we don't let them pump we barely survive during that evening peak because if you see here, we are continually seeing the generation tripping at that time. When we call generation, they are tripping. And you know, basically, we barely survived during that early morning of uh, Christmas Eve. We have over at the seven o'clock, over 46,000 megawatts generation tripping at that time. So we had to call a demand and response. December 23rd and 2024, significant along that period of time. We also relied on our north border to give us support. You know, PGM is a net export most of the time. Even at the beginning of uh, 20, uh, 23, uh, 20, December 23, we are exporting 11,000 megawatt to, our, to support our neighbor and to the TVA and SPP. But to the point we cannot know our own, we cannot survive our own, so we have to cut our export. We had to issue rolling blackout. We got the support of our north, our north border. So we survived during that time and with demand response and with no, all the support coming from our north, north neighbors. So the whole story from this winter storm, I did want to mention here, load wise is definitely an outlier because the temperature drop at 29 degrees for the same day, we never had this before. We don't have this historic data for that. So if you can see that the forecast load is significantly lower than actual load. So we were not prepared because the load forecast was not that high. And we did not know and the generation tripping can be so high. And the most of them are the gas unit. And the big cause of the gas unit Beside the equipment, you no know, power plant issue because equipment are too cold. The other big issue is gas supply. So basically, gas supply, the warehead freeze, they cannot, the, there's no gas coming from the pipeline or either because gas is too expensive. When we call the generation online, they say either the unit running until they tripped offline, failure, or they say there's no gas. I cannot come out, no gas. So there's a big challenge coming from the winter storm Elliot. And this is not just a PGM system, everywhere. And then um, MISO, SPP, New England, almost under forecast for all this RTO. And also generation tripping also significantly higher for all the RTO. So now putting on my head of IEEE PES hat there. So what the big challenge we are facing, you know, we have more extreme weather. For forecasting wide, we don't have that much of a historic data for forecasting. So definitely we need to do a better job of load forecasting. And also, you know, such high amount of uh, the unit tripping coming from gas unit, we rely on 50% of gas units. So that's a big chunk of our generation for leads. We need to do a better job uh, to talk to the gas industry, you know, align the two, and also we need a market, how we can no, I mentioned earlier, we issued, we uh, implemented capacity performance market, just trying to, for that purpose, you know, trying to provide the incentive. But after this, it seems the still did not work very well. How we can do better job to is provide incentive to the generators? You know, either they have to, as a, we need to require them to do a fuel if they're committing the capacity market to get, uh, have them to procure firm gas, so they have to deliver. So for this winter storm alley, our gas unit is facing about two billion penalty. But still, no, they are they probably still are profitable, <laughs> considering how expensive gas could be. So those are the area um, we are working on. Actually, you no, know, FERC and also NERC have a joint investigation for the winter storm alley event. 
because it's cover a big chunk of uh, U.S. and also, you no, know, we have more and more extreme events, and also after 2021 winter storm Elliot, that uh, a URA, which is you no know, impact uh, ag occurred. So multiple initiative from NERC side, we try to enforce, you know, require all the generators do a better job on winterization, and also on the gas supply side, we have had a lot of work to do. So as I mentioned, we survived, rely on lots of emergency procedures. Uh, I don't want to go into detail. This is a very you know, NERC procedure. If you are interested, you can take a look. One important thing, you no know, maximum generation alert. We have required all the generation on. We have to have the we have to have a demand response on. So those are really you no know, save our um, system, uh, make our you know, avoid any rolling blackout. We also very interesting. We called for public appeal for conservation. So we don't have ability right now to quantify the effect, how much impact coming from the public appeal. But I see you no know, sitting in the control room. We see it definitely take effect. Um, our you know, at home we say okay, we're turning off unnecessary electricity use. We ask people adjusting the thermostat down. So those also take effect. So. Uh, at the end of the day, PGM system survived without any rolling blackout, but we know we have to prepare for our next extreme event. So that's something we have to deal with. I think right now it's happened for the past couple of years. Extreme events happen so frequently to the system. It's an industry problem. I rely on all of you to help to solve. I think that's end of my talk. Three questions. Yeah. So, what do you think about the implementation of artificial intelligence in the power system? For example, if we have artificial intelligence, which is trained on all the historical load data, that data, other data, could it be possible to replace some components of the market structure? Yeah, very good question. My personal view, and I think AI, um, artificial intelligence, machine learning can play a very big role in those whole grid market operation. No, lots of historic data we can do better using AI to help load forecasting, renewable forecasting, help our operator to make a better decision. So big role there. Lots of potential. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to ask, like, uh, you said something about you know trying to do a feasibility assessment. So can my question is, can't you enforce those constraints as part of your position problem? Um. Yes. So um, right now it's separate because the optimization cannot include as many as as many constraints. That's in one is solution problem, the other is time. There is a time pressure to solve. So we only enforce the constraint which is in the close to the limit. Otherwise, our system is big. Um, we will have over 6,000 contingency. That will be lots of you know, hard, we, much harder problem to solve right, right, than right now. Right now, we have about, you know, for the real-time operation for the harder states, we have a clo the, the, the highest time, we have about 50 transmission constraints to enforce. If we consider all, that could be causing solution challenge. So basically solve the problem and then you enforce the constraints one after the other, depending on which one. No, 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 that's for day ahead. For real time, all the constraints together, um, whatever activated, right. together with uh, with an uh, optimization problem. Final question. Yeah. Oh, I guess it was kind of, I don't know if it was similar. OK, to that. I think we're very much behind. OK, all Let's right. Let's end the speaker. Yeah, thanks everyone to be here, ask a lot of good questions. I think I see lots of hope to our industry. All right. Thank you. <laughs>